Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today I'm going to be making this stainless steel coffee pour over funnel with this little stand so I can enjoy some of my friend Jeff Fader's EDC coffee. Check it out. So I started out this project by taking a coffee filter and just tracing it onto a piece of paper. I don't have a pour over dripper at the moment, so I don't have anything really to base this off of except for some photos that I found online. But I figured once I got the filters, it would give me a pretty clear roadmap as to what I needed to build in terms of the funnel for the top of the dripper. So kind of reverse engineering the filter and understanding that if I want to cut out a cone, I'm gonna to need to cut out this sort of double arc shape um, out of the material so that when I roll it into itself, it'll give me that you know gentle cone sort of shape. So I made kind of this first one out of paper and it gave me a good idea as to what I needed to do next. Um, I had to expand on the dimensions a little bit, make it a little bit taller and um, just sort of change a little bit of the end point so that I would get a kind of more wide open funnel that the filter would fit in well. So this is kind of a nice little exercise in terms of figuring out how to make different shapes. Um, and this, you know, a little bit of knowledge will be helpful on a future project. I'm sure next time I need to make some sort of funnel or cone shape for something else. So once I had the shape sort of figured out on paper, I grabbed some stainless. This is left over from a backsplash that I had done. And this is, I think, 20 gauge stainless steel I got from Online Metals. And uh, it's still pretty, you know, uh, pretty robust. Stainless in general is a lot stronger and has a lot more resistance than a mild steel uh, sheet would use. So I'm using my Beverly Shear here, and it's definitely given me a little bit more of a fight than you would with mild steel, being that it's stainless. But overall, you know, I want to make this thing something that I don't have to worry about it getting rusty if it sits in the sink. And also because coffee is extremely acidic, it would just kind of immediately eat right into that mild steel. So cutting with the Beverly Shear, shear is great. You can cut curves. Um, you just sort of have to manipulate the metal as you go. But obviously it leaves a pretty sharp burr, so I'm sure to wear a glove so I don't get cut up. And I can take my little die grinder and just sort of grind off some of those burrs. Now I had actually given this uh, an attempt prior to the one that you're seeing right here. And instead of using my slip roller, I actually tried to hammer the shape over the horn of the anvil. And it worked out pretty well, but it was pretty labor intensive and it didn't really give me a uniform shape. So after I sort of kind of thought about it and, and regrouped, I thought, well, why don't I try the slip roller and see how it works in making a cone shape like this. And I was pleasantly surprised that if I tapered the rollers and sort of fed it in straight, try to make it uh, perpendicular to the axis on the bottom every time I rolled it, I could get a pretty nice funnel shape and a pretty uniform shape in general out of the slip roller. And this is just like a cheap Chinese ship slip roller that I got on Amazon. And it, it's not great, but it did uh, manage this process pretty well. There's definitely a learning curve here because I would either over tighten it or under tighten it and I wasn't able to actually get the two ends to meet using the slip roller. But that's okay because I was able to manipulate them uh, with my hands and then over on the anvil I was able to kind of force things into the right spot. Since I'm going to be brazing these two ends together, I want to make sure that I'm able to close up the end of the cone. Um, and in order to do that, I go over to the anvil and I just start hammering in on the shape and it's going to help me close up those ends using this little body chasing hammer. And I'm just sort of watching those two ends, just trying to get them closer and closer. I bend them a little bit in with my hands, but overall, just by sort of hammering them and, and sort of shrinking the metal around that, that horn, it was able to help me close these things up enough that once I go to uh, braise them, there'll be a nice lap joint there.
All right, so I've got my cone all hammered out. Now I'm gonna braise this together. Um, I was gonna TIG weld it, but I don't have any stainless rod at the moment. So I've got this handy little chart from Harris. Uh, and what I can do here is just look up what I gotta join. In this case, it's stainless to stainless. And it'll tell me the different filler metals I can use, um, some information about them, and then the type of torch. So I have some uh, safety sill 45 on hand, and I have the white brazing flux, and I have a in, uh, and I have a Harris Inferno torch. So Harris Inferno is just an acetylene torch, no oxygen. So using this thing is great. It just helps me make sure that I'm using all the right stuff. Got my solder, got my flux torch. Let's get this thing joined up and try and not ruin it. So I'm going to be using a white brazing flux, which is nice because it has the brush in the cap. So I don't have to go out and find a, uh, a little acid brush every time I need it. And what's important here is to get a nice tight fit on these pieces of metal. Um, you know, normally if you were soldering or brazing like a piece of pipe, it's a pretty close slip fit. Now, since this is a lap joint, it's a little more difficult and you've got to kind of combat the heat because uh, heat will make any metal warp. So. I just heat this stuff up with the oxyacetylene torch. It gets hot pretty quickly. And then I add the Safety Sill 45 uh, brazing rod and it flows into the joint pretty well. Um, I kind of overfluxed this, I think. And as a result of that, I got a lot of the you know, brazing alloy on parts of it that I didn't want. It's okay, it does grind off, but the stuff sticks really, really well. So if you get it anywhere you don't want to, you definitely have to spend a little bit of time grinding it off. I'm using one of these cool um, multi-purpose wheels from Fair to Brasive. This is a little bit of like Scotch-Brite with some sanding paper in between it. And it does a really nice job and gives a nice finish um, over on that solder joint. And then I go over to one of these nylon wheels on the bench grinder and that also helps clean it up and gets a lot of the heat marks off of it. The last step was going over to the belt grinder and here I'm starting with my platen installed just to kind of grind out that line and then you can see what's nice about this grinder in particular is it's, it's going to be really quick for me to take that platen out and use a slack belt. Now for uh, you know an organic kind of shape like this I don't want to leave any hard lines in it so it's nice to be able to quickly just pull that platen out and then have this nice big slack belt area that I can lean into and you can see the way the sanding belt contours to the metal and I can really kind of blend out any marks that I might have left in it or any heat marks from the brazing process. This is a Broadback Signworks 2x72 grinder. I'll throw a link down in the description. They support me in my shop and you should check this thing out if you're in the market for a grinder. Now once I was done with the sanding paper, I went back to a surface conditioning belt and again just trying to kind of even everything out. Now I'm going to wind up going through this process of, of grinding and cleaning up this funnel a couple times because every time I add heat I want to make sure I remove those marks, but kind of just working through it and understanding a base point is really good. Now for the inside of the funnel, I went over to my sandblaster and I just blasted out all the heat marks and tried to remove any impurities or any flux or braze that might have gotten in there. I can go back over and throw my flat platen back on the grinder and I can grind out the bottom of this cone so that when I go to braze on the bottom plate, I have a nice flat surface. Um, obviously, the way that I rolled this, I didn't get a perfectly flat mating surface, but I want it to sit nice and flush and grind the bottom and top using the flat platen. I also used that little multi-purpose sanding attachment uh, to grind out the inside, which smoothed it out a lot and just sort of made it feel a little more finished. Now over on the drill press, I grabbed that sheet of stainless and a nice sized hole saw and I drilled out what will be the bottom plate of the dripper. And the purpose of this was I wanted to make something that I could put in a stand but also stick on top of a mug if I wanted to just use it kind of standalone. So, you know, I took my time, drilled through that, got this little piece off of there. The 
the tricky part with making a, a disc like this is it, it's like a razor blade sharp, so you've got to be careful with it, and you've got to make sure that you deburr those edges so that you don't cut yourself when you're handling something like this. Now I needed to add a couple of extra holes to it because I want the coffee to be able to drip through in a couple different locations. So I just traced out where the, the part would be, drew a couple of lines, and made a couple of dots where I would want to be punching some holes. Now I was going to drill these holes with the drill press, but I figured why not use the iron worker. So I threw a little uh, 3 16 punch in the iron worker and just went through and quickly punched these you know, five or six holes. You can't really get any faster than that, and it punches a perfect burr-free hole. Now I decided I wanted to add a little bit of texture to this thing overall, so I went over to the horn of the anvil using a ball-peen hammer and just started putting in some sort of little dimples. Now this was a pretty time-consuming process, but in the end I, I think it helped with just the overall aesthetic of the piece, and it also just you know hid some of my crimes, made sure that it all kind of had the same sort of look. I degreased the bottom plate, and figured out how I was going to fixture it up. I wound up kind of making an attempt at soldering it and then having to go back and do it again. So here you're seeing me grind off a little bit of that braise. And um, once I got that all sort of cleaned up and ready to go, I'm able to fixture it up using that little piece of scrap plate, a clamp, and a piece of angle steel. Now you're going to have to combat you know, warping and heat anytime you're brazing or soldering. So having a nice tight fixture is really important and it's basically the only way to guarantee a tight joint. I've got my fume extractor running as well because you want to make sure that you don't breathe in any of the chemicals that are coming off of, uh, you know, the material or off of the brazing alloy or the flux. Now, originally I was going to TIG weld this project, but at the time that I was making it, I didn't have any stainless rod. So I figured why not give this a try. This is my first time doing any stainless steel brazing. And overall, I think it was a really great learning experience because this is, you know, this is how you prepare yourself for the next project for a client is by doing sort of projects like this for yourself um, and finding out the ways that you can make mistakes and learning from them. Uh, so that when you have to kind of do the real thing, you're more prepared. Now I decided to use a little bit more of the stainless that I had to make a little stand. I see a lot of these coffee uh, drippers have a little sort of, you know, square stand that the coffee can kind of drip through so that you don't have to put it on top of your mug directly. So I marked this out with a tape measure and I went over to the jump shear and just sheared off a piece. And the other lines I put in there are going to be useful for the bending. Now this is a Bailey mag break. This it uses uh, electromagnetic force to clamp that presser bar on the top. And then it's kind of like a traditional bending break where you've got this leaf that flips up. But what's really nice about this is the fact that the presser bar is so small and you can basically wrap things around it. Something like this is really versatile. Um, you can do a lot of different types of bends with a magnetic break like this and you can do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do with a standard finger break or a straight break. Once that was all done, I went back over to the drill press. I grabbed a hole saw and just drilled in from the bottom, made sure I found the center. Now I wanted to make sure I did this after I bent it because I didn't want that hole to cause the metal to bend strangely. And also if I had kind of messed up my alignment when I was bending this, I wanted to make sure the hole was gonna be dead center no matter what. Again, I just have to deburr that hole because anytime you drill with a hole saw, you usually wind up with a pretty sharp point. Now the whole time I was doing that I was allowing the um, dripper to cool and I let the fume extractor stay on it which just helps air rush over it which just helps it cool that much quicker. And I can pull the plastic protecting off of this stainless little um, frame that I built. That thing's good to go. 
and then a little bit of cleanup on the funnel itself. Kind of the same process going over to the wire wheel using this little uh, multi-purpose sander and just sort of getting in there, getting in all the nooks and crannies, cleaning it up and polishing it kind of gives me a nice, a nice look. Uh, the only other thing I had to do was the bottom of the flat plate had warped a little bit from the heat. So I just grabbed an adjustable wrench and kind of wrenched it back in, tried to get it a little bit flat. You know, I'm not going for perfection here. I just sort of wanted to experiment and make something new, so it's not a huge deal. And now the last thing I noticed was that the coffee wasn't dripping straight out the bottom. So I took a punch and I actually dimpled the bottom of the dripper. And this will kind of make the surface tension of the coffee drip straight out the bottom instead of rolling around the sides. That was a nice little solution and it worked out really well. The coffee drips straight out of the bottom and it doesn't kind of cling to the bottom of the plate and roll out the sides and leak all over the counter. One last kind of pass on that nylon wheel, a little more deburring and this thing is good to go. I can bring it home and give it a test run. All right, that about does it for this video. Um, I literally made this because I wanted to drink some of this coffee. Uh, my buddy Jeff has teamed up with Peak Skill Coffee to do a great blend uh, called the Everyday Carry Coffee. Uh, I got it in the pour over grind. And a percentage of the proceeds go to uh, helping with the COVID-19 crisis. So check out Jeff's coffee. And if you're not familiar with Jeff's work, he is an incredible knife maker. Um, in upstate New York and I'm gonna put some links to his Instagram down in the description of this video so you can see the amazing work that he does and I will also put a link to this coffee you can go and buy it so a little note about the solder that I used um, after I made this I reached out to my friends at Harris and asked them if they had any documentation about the solder that I used I used safety sill 45 now safety sill 45 is considered food safe by Harris, but there is no documentation or testing done by the FDA for that particular solder. Now they do make other solders that are 100% food safe and tested. So if you are gonna make one of these for yourself, I recommend that you use um, one of those tested solders that have the documentation behind it, just in case you know, someone were to use it, you wanna make sure you're using the right product. So um, this worked out pretty good for me. I'm very happy with it. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the project. It was a good learning experience. Um, on my Instagram, if you follow me here at Make Everything Shop, you would have seen that the first one of these I made, I totally messed up, but that's fine. It was all part of kind of learning my way through it. I'd never done any brazing on stainless steel before, especially this type where it's not pipe fitting together, where you have really just like kind of a layover fit and you've got to make sure things work well and you know, with warping and heat and all that stuff. So overall, fun experience, great coffee. Check this stuff out, check out Jeff. And uh, thank you to Harris for sending me the torch and solder for this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions. If you wanna see more stuff like this, more videos in the shop making stuff, you can subscribe to my channel. And like I said, follow me here on Instagram. You can see kind of what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, thanks to Harris for hooking me up with the stuff that I used to make this. And uh, thanks to Jeff and Peak Skill Coffee for making something awesome. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next video.